So in the next talk, Marco and Nicolo will present what Plasma 6 has in store for the future for us. Hello everybody, let's talk about Plasma 6. We'll get to the technical part of things with Marco. I don't know anything about that, but we'll talk about design and style first. So about that, the idea from the VDG that we had like some months ago was like to try to do some incremental style change, so without any big revolution in the design and the style. But whilst I was putting together the presentation, I realized that we did not do that. And in fact, we're still months away from the release. And yet we have a lot of visual changes and redesigns and such. Not all of them have land, has landed um, and are ready to be used in master, but uh, Everything that I'm gonna talk about today should be in Plasma 6 if I'm not too lazy. So starting off with some stuff about Plasma itself, we've got a completely redesigned overview, which yet again is currently not in master. It's in a branch, it's almost done. It looks completely different compared to what we have currently. It looks much more like to the GNOME overview, which I with the Blur My Shell extension, which I did use as a reference whilst implementing this. It's, in here, it's just the design that's different, but it actually works completely different because it also now includes the grid view. And the idea is that there are three states, so not uh, like no overview at all, and then normal overview, and then the grid view, and you should be able to switch from one to the next one or to the previous one, instead of having three, like two different effects. It's just a single one that has both the grid view and the overview. And whilst doing that, the um, touch screen and touchpad animation um, that gestures changed completely as well. So now you can switch between the three states. So as an example, just by doing one, one swipe up with three fingers, you're gonna switch to the next state, which is gonna be the overview. If you do it again, then you're going to switch to the grid view. And if you yet again do three fingers ups, you're gonna get back to normal. And the uh, opposite uh, things happens if you go three fingers down, as an example. And the same applies to the touchpad, so the gestures are consistent between the touch screen and the touchpad. So it's a pretty big rework of how you interact like with your open applications, and ideally this should make all the transitions uh, a bit nicer. And also if you're switching virtual desktop whilst in the overview, that looks much nicer as well. Next up, we would like to have, uh, oh no, sorry, we do have already, um, we have this already in master, it's ready. The settings for the panels have been completely redesigned. Now they have these little uh, drawings to show you what would happen if you click on each setting, which I think are super nice looking and should be applied to everywhere in system settings. And uh, this, however, cannot be the last revision of the panel settings because we do have to change them again to uh, change how we set the position of the panels and such because of some technical things that I think already happened, but I completely lost track of them. Next up, we would like to have floating panels by default, ideally. It's a discussion that we're having, but to do that, they need to work a bit better. So there is a merge request, again, not landed yet, which uh, re-implements a, the, the, a lot of the features that floating panels have. So now they do have a shadow. They didn't previously. And also, whenever there's a window maximized, they just defloat vertically uh, without taking any more space as they used to do previously. They had this big margin around them. People didn't like those margins, rightfully. Now they're just gone. 
the, it just floats towards the top or the bottom. So that's nice, and ideally, who knows, that might make uh, the floating panels uh, use, uh, usable by default. Next up, uh, applets are going to be redesigned too. Again, this is very ongoing work, so what we do have already are this couple of very pretty switches, and the idea is that everything that gets applied immediately as, uh, as soon as you click them is going to be a switch, not a checkbox, and checkboxes are going to be used for things that you click, and then you also have to click apply or it's some settings inside of an application. But yeah, I do think that these switches within the applets look very pretty. We do also have a redesigned task switcher. This comes from the Plasma Sprint just a, just a couple of months ago. And the idea is that we couldn't quite agree on which one was the prettiest task switcher. So we took a couple of them and just smashed them together. So now we do have thumbnails for each application. And we also have the icons on top of the thumbnail. So that's going to make it much easier to uh, switch to the right one. So these are the things that are going to happen to the Plasma Shell itself. Um, I hope that I'm not forgetting anything. I probably am, but we'll also get more stuff when we get closer to the release date. There's also some more stuff. Ah, uh, yes, I almost forgot about this one, sorry. So these are floating dialogues. These uh, are, again, not in master almost ready, and the only thing left is to decide how to expose them uh, to the user, and we also kind of have to decide if we want them at all. Uh, if we do want them, then they're going to look kind of like this, not by default, but as an, op as an option, either uh, that can be toggled by the user or by the Plasma theme itself. So you just put some margin in the SVG file, as an example, and then that's going to be applied around the dialog so that it's floating. This used together with the floating panel actually helps reduce the number of margin uh, errors, like um, I, I, some ugly stuff that happens when you open kickoff and it just like a floats into the nothing. So it's a bit better looking with this option. Again, mi might not be in Plasma 6, but who knows. Next up is um, not Plasma shell itself stuff. As an example, some things that are uh, like stuff that can be reverted. As an example, we do have a merge request ongoing for a completely redesigned icons uh, for places and uh, you know dolphin stuff. So this was started by Canberra and Matt a couple oh no, a year ago or something. Uh, and luckily, he wasn't able due to stuff to finish up the work. But we now do have the draft and all the Python code that went with it. And in fact, it's a lot of Python code that completely uh, automatizes the process of creating new MIME type icons and folder icons. It's a super big thing that uh, needs some Python developer help. So if you know a bit of Python and want to contribute to KDE, this could be a good starting point. It's just some tooling that needs to be finished. Next up, we do have a redesigned mouse icon theme that, if I recall correctly, is currently in master. I think it, yeah, I think it was done by Manuel. Again, some thumbs up. So I, I didn't look much at it. It looks uh, slightly different. Uh, this might not be the final, final version, but th that's it. OK, <laughs> so this is the final version that will for sure be in Plasma 6. And uh, I think it's like a bit darker and um, a bit prettier. <laughs> it's a bit incremental, but it looks good. We also have a redesign, redesigned, uh, if that's the word used for it, sound theme, which isn't uh, on master yet, but it is done. It is a bit weird from a technical technological point of view, how to deliver this one to the user, because currently we do not have the concept of sound themes that you can just swap out. We don't have a system settings page with a lot of sound themes that you can switch between. So one idea w w would be just to replace all old oxygen sounds with these new ones. 
It would be a bit weird, but we can do that. And uh, there's a no from the audience, so we are not going to do that. <laughs> Again, I, I'm kind of outdated on the latest info about these ones, but uh, you, you can check it out. And finally, there's also the idea of having some colorful window headers. So the context about this, uh, this doesn't exist yet. These pictures are um, edited and they're also misleading because you see a lot of different colors between windows. That's not the idea. The idea is that you have an accent color, as always, and that accent color is slightly applied to the window header uh, that you're currently using. It's going to be the same accent color for all the headers, uh, but only for the active window so that it's easier to actually distinguish what you're currently using from other windows. Also, there is no merge request or patch that currently implements this. Uh, there are two different options. One, to actually paint the header bars, but uh, it uses a different color that's way stronger. It's actually the same one as the accent color, so we don't want to go that route. And the other one does tint the colors, but it tints all of the colors of the window which is pretty cool, but we didn't, go, we didn't want to go that route by default. So this is the idea. You pick an accent color. It's going to be slightly tinted. It's probably not going to be as strong as I presented it right, now, right here. This is just to see what's going on. Just something very slight to help you identify what is the currently active window. Um, from the design point of view, I think that was everything. If you have any questions, I guess that's at the end we're going to do. And if I forgot anything, again, I'm really sorry. But uh, that's what I was able to come up with. OK, so now, unfortunately, the pretty pictures are over. And there are boring technical details and code samples. So bear with me, please. Most uh, of the rest of the talk will be uh, about things uh, inside uh, Plasma Shell itself and how Plasmoid are written. Uh, but to, it would be unjust to talk about uh, Plasma 6 uh, without mentioning some important things that are coming in the other big, very big component of a Plasma session, which is Queen. Just three, uh, three important things to mention. In, in master already, Queen, uh, it, on, on, uh, it will uh, support HDR. So uh, if you have the right hardware, the right monitor, uh, if you run an application that natively supports HDR, such as uh, a particular game uh, or a particular video, it should work out of the box everything more colorful and beautiful. Another big feature on Wayland, which is very important for feature parity with X11, the restart support. So until now, on a Wayland session, on, on, on any system, on any desktop, if you had a crash on your compositor, or uh, if you just wanted to restart your compositor, then you lose the whole of your session, or all of your applications. Uh, now it will, the applications will support the, compo the compositor going away, uh, at least every application that supports the pro protocol, and then the compositor restarts, and you should get all your application running like nothing uh, happened. Another thing, not there yet, but it's we are uh, planning to support, which could have quite some applications. There is a new pro uh, Wayland protocol floating around about workspaces that it's basically a virtual desktop protocol on steroids, which will al allow us to do things like different virtual desktop error activity or different virtual desktop error output, which also ties on the further support of tiling that we will do in Queen, since apparently for, for tiling window manager users, having different virtual desktop per screen, it's quite of an important thing. Now, passing on all the rest on what's happening in what is, if you read the Plasma session, so your panels, your widgets, uh, and what changes are in the Plasma library and in how, how uh, you are writing plasmoids. The rest of the talk will be out about that because there are many third-party plasmoids on the store. 
whoever maintains that will have to do quite some work. The good news is that almost everything that that is around on demand, everything on workspace and whatnot, has already been ported, but there are quite some important API changes. So let's start with a thing we are getting rid of. Uh, so data engines, that was that, uh, that concept that we had at the beginning of KD4. At the beginning, we wanted to write plasmoids in JavaScript. That was before QML even existed. So we came up with a, with a, a completely imperative API. And the, the way to get data from like your tasks, like your notifications and whatnot, from a C++ source wa was with the, that API. It worked very well in an uh, imperative work. It doesn't really work. We, we do have bindings from QML, but doesn't really match well. That job is done much better by QML extensions. So you have, you, you, you write your, your Q object with properties and data models and whatnot and expose that to QML. Now it's the way to do uh, that. So everything about data engines has been moved out of Liplasma. It's, it's in, in its own repo in workspace called Plasma 5 support. So for the time being, the existing data engines still work, but we are planning to eventually get rid of all of that. Second thing, SVGs. We will still support SVG teams as they are. You can think they are kind of getting long in the tooth. That, that's, that's correct. Um, and we eventually will have even some, some way to replace that. It will not be for Plasma 6.0. It's something to, to think about in the future. But in the meantime, actually some things in all the SVG related libraries were quite useful. And for instance, I heard many times that somebody wanted to have some simple SVG icons in its Android application that, but that wanted to recolor with, with a color theme and uh, cache on disk because loading SVGs on Android was not with Qt SVG was not really great. In Plasma there were classes to do exactly that. Couldn't use them because all of the dependencies of the Plasma that depended from everything. Now all of that has been moved to a different framework called KSVG basically recycling the name of an old dead one, but it's fine. So it's uh, Plasma SVG, Plasma Frame SVG, so still supporting the nine patches thing. Everything about Qt SVG is not exposed in the public API, so in the, in the future we could even, in a compatible way, switch the backend if uh, need arises. For now, if you were using it, porting it, it's very simple, it's just pretty much just the changing the import, changing the namespace, and it's okay. All the old API still works for simple SVG items. Uh, you are now just recommended to use this more compact form, but the old form still worked. A nice addition is uh, that, that this framework has, compared to the Plasma version, if you had SVGs that support all the style sheet, stuff to, to have like uh, a rectangle with the, with the same color of the system color background. Now this, this works with normal system colors. It integrates with Kirigami and the Kirigami team class. So even if you by hand replace a color, then in your SVG that repaints with the new color as well, which is nice. On the C++ side, there is this image set class where you define where your SVGs are, so you don't have to use a plasma team. In your application, you can have uh, any set of elements uh, and files you want, and you can ship it, for instance, in the data application of your application, or, or, or together with all the QML files, or whatever you want, you control it with this class. Yeah, that's basically it. The biggest headache, if someone wrote a plasmoid, a third-party plasmoid on the store, the biggest headache is a big change in the plasmoid API. Also, the, the plasmoid API w still had many components from uh, the old imperative JavaScript API, and we wanted to get rid of all of them. So you had this 
still this magical context property, which is a not, not a good thing to have in QML, called plasmoid, which was a Q-quick item that wrapped most, not all, kind of similar but not exactly the same API of the, the central class of Plasma that is Plasma Applet. Now you only have the uppercase Plasma, so an attached property version, which is directly in the Plasma Applet instance. So you can use basically 100% of the API or everything that is exposed in the API as properties, invocable signals, and whatnot. Uh, what was that QQuick item? Uh, it became a graphical element called plasmoid item that now must be the root element of your plasmoid. So comparing these, we used to have any random item as the root item and then put the test properties for like full representation. So basically this full representation will always be basically your item. So this in most of the plasmos, this this actual graphical item was not shown anywhere in the in the scene, which was kind of weird. Now you declare it like that, and the, and, and this is, will be the actual root object in the scene of uh, your plasmoid. The more semantic properties like title, like the status, if it's expanded or not, are still of plasmoid, which is now the applet. And the purely graphical ones, like the actual representation or compact representation for representation, are direct properties of that plasma item. That that the main thing that changes. Another thing that was completely taken from the JavaScript API was the actions API. Basically, a plasma can just add an arbitrary number of context menu action if you right click like on its icon on the panel or whatnot. It used to have this API that it's uh, very imperative. So in uncompleted, then bunch of JavaScript, which created internally, this is called, created internally a queue action. And then if you wanted to bind something, you even had to use an imperative API for, for property bindings. And then to react when, when the user clicked that, you had to declare a function with a kind of magical name. So if this was previous, it was action previous, and then you have your code. Now on the attached plasmoid object, contextual action is a list property. So you just declare a list of everything you need. And then, and then the action, you just, you just put it declaratively with all the bindings and whatnot. This action type is actually an actual queue action because there are things that still go from QML to C++ back and forth. So they are not QML actions. It's something that I would really like that was supported in QML. The fact that the QML actions are not real actions, it's still something I'm not completely happy. So yeah, hopefully in the future, something better we will have. Another thing that, that changes in uh, how things are done. Uh, so in, Kir in Kirigami, when you, we first designed it, we had lifted pretty much one-to-one -one some concept that we were using and, and liking in Plasma that, that we could not use there, again, because of dependencies, that brought out quite some code duplication. Basically, two, two big classes, Plasma Team and Plasma Units. So Plasma Team for all the colors. So I want a background color, I want a text color, what not that come magically from the proper color team. But over, over, over the, the years, the, the Kirigami version got much more advanced than the Plasma version, like this inheritance. So I can say the Kirigami team of, of this item is a header. So if, it, if a header has different colors, everything in that item, also the sub-items, will have colors from the header, which is possible because it, it's an attached property that, that's narrates in the whole tree of, uh, of the scene, while the Plasma version was a singleton, so this was the same for the whole application, it didn't really work. Also in Kirigami, for some reason, the application wants that in that particular part and all its children, the background color is not normal, but it's a particular shade of purple for reasons, it works. So in Plasma 6, a team 
it will go away. Just use the Kirigami version. Units that it's for for duration, animation duration, layout spacing, and whatnot. Also that use the Kirigami version. Another class that was in Plasma was Color Scope that was implementing that iner color inheritance that, that I talked before. Also that goes away from Plasma 6. So, so yeah, just just use the Kirigami version. A blocker that we couldn't do that in, in, in Plasma 5 was that we may have to need two different teams. So like Plasmoids need colors that come from the Plasma team. Configuration Dialogues needs colors that come from the system team. By default, those two are the same thing, but some Plasma teams have their own color set. So we have to, based where we are, we have to return the proper colors. Now this works in Plasma 6. So, so that's fine. So also, yeah, units, I use the Kira game version. Icons, we had a particular widget for displaying icons in Plasma that was also duplicated in Kirigami, didn't make any sense. So use only the, the Kirigami version. It's kind of unfortunate that one to display icons that properly works is not really in QML base, but at least we have only one implementation instead of two. So yeah, most of most of the work in Plasma 6 was actually to make it way smaller with much less code to maintain, so hopefully less bug. -y. So any question? Both of my part and Nicola part. Noah. So Regarding the floating dialogues, are you gonna like have a way to have a little arrow that points to the part to the little applet? That's been requested. Actually implementing that would be quite painful to say the least. So I would be inclined to say currently no. Like ideally I would like to have that, but eh. understandable. It's uh, it's possible. It's uh, it's yeah. It's painful. It's it's not technically impossible. All the dialogue. Also, one thing that I forgot to mention: all the implementation of those pop-ups, the the dialogue class was quite of a mess internally, has been rewritten. So m that may make it a bit easier to do in the future. So I must, I must say I'm sick and tired of oxygen sound, so I'm glad that there's finally something new coming up. I'm also happy that you look into the XG sound scheme spec, which is something I've wanted to implement for the longest time. So we should have a chat about all of that if there's anything else you need or if there's something that might be still floating around on my computer that you could find useful. But yeah, so very nice work on the whole uh, sound stuff. Yeah. And let's bring back the broken glass sound. <laughs> So now that we have the ability to use Kirigami themes, theme stuff, can you touch a little bit on the blockers to unifying the actual component sets themselves such that we could also get rid of the duplication between, say, the Kirigami and Plasma versions of things like placeholder message, label, things like that? Right, so there is still one problem to just use every single Kirigami components in Plasmoid, still for the same problem of having to support two teams in the same process. So uh, for everything that is just colors, like uh, just label headers and, and things like that, we now can use it without problems. Everything that uses Qt quit controls, so like if a controller has inside a button, then that becomes a problem because simply the import import Qt quit controls do gives gives you only possible team per process because it's how the type the, the button type is registered. So we cannot have two, and that that is still an unsolved problem in Qt six, unfortunately. No more questions? <clears throat> and thank you, Marco and Nicolo.